Making a Stuart model steam plant part 10. My kitchen table is full of model steam engine parts and the last of them finally arrives. I think that it's a good job that I live by myself. Look at the state of my kitchen table. And why is it full of model steam engine parts? Well, once upon a time, a customer from America contacted me and asked me to build him a steam plant. I gave him a price for building the plant using parts supplied by him. The sheer quantity of parts nullifies a bill on this job because there's a lot of useful stuff here. And a lot more in the workshop, like, for instance, seven Stuart boilers in varying conditions. Three Stuart S50 steam engines and two double ten V Stuart steam engines. Unfortunately, most of them have dints and dings on them, but the one I'm going to use on this plant is actually perfect. This large cardboard tube was the last item to arrive, and inside the cardboard tube were lots more metal tubes, mainly brass and copper, very thin-walled copper, which is not good for steam engines. It's nothing to do with the copper not being able to stand the pressure, it's just very difficult to bend thin-walled copper tube. There's a lot of this stuff which will possibly just go into my store of metals that I never use in the outer part of the workshop. When I've taken all the parts that are required to build the steam plant, and once I've built the steam plant, I will sell the parts I don't need. More about this later on in the episode. It's a real random array of bits and pieces. This is some grout stroke cement for Doll's House Masonry. The customer has requested that I tile the base of the steam plant, which I'm not really keen about, because whenever I've been in a steam engine house, I haven't been stood on slippery tiles. That's not the main problem though. The main problem is the durability of the tiles. This terracotta stuff is very porous, so I would have to varnish it. But there is still a risk of oil and water getting into the terracotta and making it look horrible. Quite a lot of these parts that arrived from the customer in America were very badly damaged. Originally, in this package, the terracotta tiles were in food containers like this one. It's a new one as this, it's okay. But the ones in the package were completely smashed. The packing itself inside the boxes was a bit inadequate, but I really think that the shippers must have been playing football with some of the packages. In one of the packages was this. It's a Southworth Engines 6-inch vertical pump kit, complete with the O-ring set and all the gunmetal castings. As Blackgate's engineering actually owns Southworth Engines, I would presume that this came from them, all the way from quite close to me here to California and back again. A very well-travelled set of castings. In amongst the rest of the parts, I do notice quite a lot of things were also originally purchased from Blackgate's engineering. This is a bit of a random array of bits and pieces, some scrap metal, a couple of pressure gauges, and this graphite packing. I wonder what this is like, because the modern stuff in the UK isn't very good. This is a Stuart Models generator kit. I use the term kit lightly. It's just a collection of very rough castings to make into a generator. The castings really are very rough and would need a lot of fettling before you even begin. The iron bits that are magnetised, or will need magnetising, are already built into the casting. And there's a large bar magnet that I assume fits in the bottom of the casting. When I get a chance I'll have a look at the drawings, but not for a while because I'm very busy. The next thing out of the package is another Stuart box. And this one contains the heat insulation material and the side panels for a brand new 504 boiler. What I propose to do is build up one of the 504 boilers to get the plant layout. The finished 504 boiler that I will use in the plant will only be put on the plant when the job is completed. Then I will remove the boiler from the plant to ship it back to the USA as a separate item, carefully packaging it on its own in a very large box. Here's another collection of bits and pieces, some random bits of copper tubing, a really horrible thing that looks like a biscuit barrel, and no less than a genuine Stuart Models water reservoir tank. This I will definitely fit to the plant. I'll make a condenser to fit over the other side to balance out the look. There are various pieces of copper end caps here. This looks like it may have been some sort of a tank or boiler kit. These parts are not very exciting, but they may come in useful one day. There are six of these boxes, completely full of different parts. This one has a collection of safety valves, some of them Stuart, some water gauges and displacement lubricators and old taps. Here's another water gauge that I've just found. There are also quite a few pressure gauges and every one of them is too small. These are the three quarters of an inch diameter ones. 
Here's the genuine Stuart model's water gauge. And there are a couple of other types. All over the place there are shim washers loose in the box. I'll sort these out and add them to my collection. Here are some Stuart taps to also add to my collection. And a very nice small precision oiler. The displacement lubricators are a bit of a random collection. There are a couple of Stuart ones and the rest I think are PM Research. And yet another Stuart safety valve and more water gauge parts which are very useful. On to the next box and this is full of mainly parts from PM Research. These are globe valves and these are the special cast unions that PM Research do. This is a pair of four way types. And then there's a box of threaded brass tubing and I really don't like this at all. The company PM Research makes some excellent things for the model industry. But piping an entire plant using quarter of an inch diameter piping with elbows everywhere is not my idea of reality. I do find them very useful for exhaust piping, but definitely not for inlet piping. Here's another box to have a look in. Yeah, these are mainly union nuts and bits and pieces, with the exception of this very nicely made water pump. If anyone knows what this is from, please let me know. This looks like the cylinder cladding from one of the double ten V engines. I will repaint these parts and fit them to the double ten V that I'm going to use in the plant. The small bell whistle is quite nice, spoiled somewhat by having a plastic handle. Most of the parts in this box are generally adapters and union nuts etc. The last box is this one and it contains water gauge glasses, some of them broken, possibly in transit, or into the football match using the package as a ball. And also in this final box there are quite a lot more shim washers. I really am going to be fine for shim washers for the next few years. And here once again is a view of my kitchen table. I just move some of the parts out of the way when I want to eat. But today I am going to take them up into the workshop. Just before I go, on the floor next to my Hammond L102 organ is the remains of the last open package. And this is what's left. I mentioned in a previous episode that I will be selling quite a lot of these parts and that was a bit of a mistake. They will be coming up for sale to my Patreon supporters who are in the $5 or more tier. But please do not write in now and try and reserve parts and also I'm not going to split the parts. All of the boilers will be sold in as complete a form as I can make them, more or less ready to go. I may have some parts left over at the end but I won't know about that until the end. Please don't write in and try and reserve the parts. I will make a video with the stuff for sale and then that's the time to make your bid. When I release the video, and it won't be for a while yet, it will be strictly first come, first served. That's it for this episode. I now seem to have all the parts so I can start the construction process. Please stay healthy. Thanks for watching. And now I'm going to sort out every one of the parts that I've received, including the ones in the workshop, which should take me about two or three hours, I think. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.